Hey guys, welcome back to NB Edits. Still out here in the Minnesota area with Smackham Outdoors and Mindac Outdoors, John. He's over there trying to grind out crappies. Not really working so hot for him. See, us on the other hand, we already got on top of a giant school of crappies. Uh, had our fun there. So today, what we're gonna be doing is we are gonna be setting some iFish Pros, some giant suckers, and we are gonna be going for some pike and some walleye possibly. At least that's the plan. So right now, basically the lake that we're fishing is like, I don't know, maybe 50 acres or so, maybe a little bigger. I'm not really sure, I can't judge it that much, but it's basically a bowl. And what we've found is that the entire bottom of the lake is all muck, and then around the edges, it is pretty much all weeds. So we found the weed edge currently right now, and we're gonna be just setting all the iFish Pros that we have, which in Minnesota, I did not know this, but you can only have two lines. You cannot have three like it is in Wisconsin. So I'm gonna show you guys how to rig up an iFish Pro, get her down there, and hopefully we're gonna be chasing some flags. All I do know though, is that those are gonna come in so handy. I mean, he's definitely gonna beat me to every single flag, so. Should be a good time. I'm gonna get to rigging and we are gonna get on top of some fish. All right guys, so we're at the first hole here. We're in about seven and a half feet. Pretty much goes from uh, that hole was about four and four feet, five feet, and with some weeds. And then this one doesn't have weeds at all, but it transitions to that mud flat and it's onto the drop off. Cause the one right behind me goes straight to 11. So if you guys are not familiar with an iFish Pro, it is pretty much a tip up. As you can see, it does have the flag, but instead of just hand lining, you are gonna be using your favorite ice fishing rod. It is extremely simple to set. All you do, set her down. Basically what we're gonna be doing today is we got suckers. I'm gonna be just hooking that. I'm using pretty sure only a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader, which is not ideal for pike fishing at all. But these were last used last season for walleyes. And I have not had a chance to rig them again. So basically, I'm gonna be sending that down. I'm just gonna keep it probably, I don't know, a couple feet off the bottom. You don't have to get too fancy with pike because they pretty much, if it's down there, they're gonna eat it. All right, so I got my minnow about two feet off the bottom right now. I'll show you guys at a different angle exactly what I'm doing here. But basically, you just set this into the rod holder, keep your bail open. And then when a fish comes and grabs it, obviously it'll pull the flag. You come over, you grab your reel, set the hook, fight the fish. And that is pretty much it. We're gonna set a few more of these. Kind, We're gonna do a couple along this ridge line and weed edge. And then we're also gonna run a few out there because during crappie fishing, we've seen a couple pike uh, swimming through on the live scope. So we're gonna be doing that and seeing if we can get some on top of the ice real soon. This is a different angle of what I was talking about. Got your line your bail open that runs directly to this little tab and basically that's just holding your line in place with a bobber stop right here so then when a fish would pull this that would pull this tab out triggering the flag up and then you basically just move this to the side and that's when you would fight the fish not sure if we're gonna get one exactly in the spot but John said there's pike in here we've seen a couple and we're just gonna see if we can make it happen Hopefully uh, he's catching some fish. We're probably gonna go over there and just see what the heck's going on. If he can get her done. Kind of looks like they're getting after her right now, but we're gonna head on over and see what the action's about. Oh, that was such a far run. A little bit. What? Sitting out to the side. Whew. Literally just walked away from this tip up. It's yeah. like a foot of line out. Oh, oh we love that. Well, that's... Usually if that was a pike, that'd be just peeling. Yeah. I'd be even more pissed if there was. Yeah, look. Here's your loop right here. Oh yeah. Love that. Oh yeah, I can just feel the sucker. Fish on. I literally just set this. Like, I just set it. Dustin's not even gonna leave this.
So we ran over here originally for a tip up, but it just took it about a foot and then it dropped it. I literally just set this down. He just went back because him and John are on a giant school of crappies and it just popped again, stopped running. But this time it did indeed take the minnow. So I have to get pliers. I gotta get another minnow. I gotta reset this, but I think we're gonna be running for a lot of flags. So this is the first of many, just a little hammer handle, but hey, you gotta start somewhere. Some of the marks that we did get out there were a lot bigger pike than this. So let's get them unhooked and get her back set. Ran back by crappie master John. And it looks like he's just, he's clapping. Is Dude, me and case? Dustin start tag teaming these fish, and that's the move, 100%. Well, it turns out the pike must have gone away, huh? Cause... The pike pushed everything out of here. Screw the pike. Those are some nice ones. I'm exhausted, and honestly, that was just the first flag, and the problem is that's on the opposite side of the lake from where I'm at right now. So I'm thinking we're probably not going to have a tip up there, which sounds crazy because it just caught a fish, but... There's just no way I can do that much running. I'm gonna end up dying out here if I do that, especially with all of us set up right here. So the plan probably is gonna be to set up the iFish Pros out where we're actually fishing, where we actually have seen some pike too, and just go from there. So let's get after it. Well, while we wait for some flags, John and I are gonna be taking our live scope units and just kind of scanning this mud flat basin here looking for these crappies john said he found a couple over here so we're walking on over right now see what's up wow all right that was random decent little crappie I was messing around with my settings on my Garmin and I wasn't even paying attention to the screen. This little guy came up and munched. That will do to pass some time. I see John just caught a pike over there. So I don't see a reason why our tip ups wouldn't be going off. Um, oh! Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> You love these, that. These fish are like, let's go to where they're not at, where they can't walk. Go to the thinnest ice possible and make them fall through. Uh, yeah, but have you ever caught a crappie before? Oh, yeah. That one's slammed. Hey, we did it. I just started fishing them away. Dude, they were here and then they, they're gone. Dude, they know. They don't want this smoke. I do have a bigger mark coming in. I don't think this is a crappie. No way he missed me. It's a crappie. Super aggressive. But, nice quality crappie there. You want me to keep this thing or? All right. Just one random lone one, but he came in and smoked it right away. There we go. They're all pretty much cookie cut from the last one absolutely inhaled it though i mean they're definitely crushing it if they come in to frame here on the live scope problem is these fish these schools are massive like john and i literally moving all over this lake right now trying to stay with them but problem is they're just moving so fast i'm not sure what the reason is behind that but the time we get to them we can maybe get one drop down on them catch a fish or two and then they are out of there. But if we kind of post up on a spot, it seems like they do eventually come back in. Looking on John's live scope here. So if you guys are unfamiliar with live scope, this is right where we are. It's casting down. 
15 feet to the bottom. We're in 13.7 feet. And out, scanning out 70 feet that way. All of these marks right here, these are all fish. Every single one of them. So basically, he's pointing that direction. And what we're gonna do is, is just grab the auger, go over that direction 70 feet, actually 40 feet where these fish are. And you can actually see where he'll drill down and get on these fish right here. Okay, mid scanning for that, John noticed that there's a couple of crappies literally right under us. They've literally all been like this size or probably up to like what, 10 or 11 inches, some of them that we've gotten. That one will have to go back because we already caught our limit, but what I've noticed is when you find the schools in this specific lake, it is just insane. Like crappie fishing that I've never, like I've experienced crappie fishing in a lot of schools, but it seems like when you get on top of them, man, this lake really is crazy. And the live scope too is just insane. Probably one of the better purchases I've ever made for ice fishing. God, look at you. Three hook sets later. Typical size right there. Nice eater size, but letting them go. Flasher. There it is. There it goes. Well, had to work it. It's probably because it is getting pretty dark now. Usually this is the time like start to get fired up, but honestly, probably like an hour or so ago, we were really just hammering into them. Decent little crappie. That's gonna be the last one of the night. I think we're gonna probably start packing up here. Getting on out, we have a decent drive to John's house, and turns out we have a lot of crappies to fish. So we're gonna wrap this up, and we will see you guys back at his house. Oh God, Nick, I'm so ready to eat my dinner right here. You have a magnetic personality. Wow. Thanks, Panda Express. You see that? <laughs> I got a magnetic personality, man. If that, if that means catching a lot of fish, then I think, I think they got it spot on. Mom, so good. Oh. Well, guys, we just got back to John's house after a long, long day of fishing and as you can see by john we grabbed some panda express we slapped that bro we didn't get a bowl we didn't get a plate we got the bigger plate both of us uh absolutely starving we did not eat all day that's probably one of the least amount of things that i do on the ice like i literally i do not think of grabbing food or water and if i do think of it i just i still don't do it because i'm too busy fishing and filming that that just isn't in my mind when I head out there. So we have not had anything all day since like 6 a.m. So we are absolutely gonna devour some Panda Express. But just wanna say thank you guys for watching today's video. We still have another day or two here in North Dakota. So I am gonna be getting a bunch more videos for you guys that you will be seeing in the future. And then as soon as I get home, there should be enough ice in northern Wisconsin to where I can be pumping out some more ice fishing videos for you guys. I plan on doing uh, some more crappie fishing just because it is one of my favorite things to do. And I am going to be, hopefully, fingers crossed, going to be hitting some walleye spots because I have missed my walleyes. I have not gone for them in probably a month, which is just a little bit too long. So. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure to check out Mindak Outdoors. I'm sure you're all subscribed to him because he's a beast. But also check out the Smack em Outdoors boys. They are going to be posting a lot more ice fishing videos, which I'm super excited to see their content just because they're awesome. And uh, yeah, I feel like they're really going to kill it out on the ice. So make sure to check out all their channels. Make sure to subscribe also if you are excited for ice fishing. We are going to be pumping out a ton of ice fishing. I know I say that every year, but John's like on my ass right now to post as many videos as I possibly can. So going to try to actually do it this year and try to give you guys as much content as possible. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one, Tight Lines from NB Edits.